Hiya, this is John Michael O'Brien, and I'm going to show you how to calculate the resistance value required for working with a diode in cosplay. You can see here, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, this, although technically correct, uh, is not necessary. This is the full calculation, and it turns out we don't need it. So, first things first, we should probably talk about little pictures on here, and what's important. So, circuit schematics, so we can read them. This here is a battery this little kind of liney thing. This here is a diode, in this particular case an LED, you can see from the little like light beam coming out of it. And this is a resistor. This represents the simplest possible circuit for doing uh, diode calculations and basically how to light up your conventional cosplay. It's not the most efficient, it's not the most easy, well sorry, it is the most easy implementation, but there are other ways to do this. Just be aware you're looking at one and this is the simplest one. So. Basically what it boils down to is we need to figure out how to make this circuit work such that this doesn't explode. Um, normally if you just connect the diode to a battery, the diode, if it does work, it only works for a short period and just kind of goes bang. So uh, we need something to limit that, which is what this resistor is in there for. So we'll need to know three things. We'll need to know our battery voltage. We'll need to know the, uh, the diode's forward voltage, and it'll be in the data sheet for the diode. And we'll also need to know the diode's forward current. That last one I can cheat. I'll tell you right now that it's 20 milliampers. Yes, there are exceptions. No, don't worry about it. If you bought the LED and didn't pay like $5 to have it, trust me, it's 20 milliampers. So, how do we solve for R? Well, it turns out there's this rule, it's called Kirchhoff's voltage law, and it says that the sum of all the voltages in the circuit have to equal up to zero. Well, for our purposes, what this means is, is that the sum of everything over here connected to the battery has to equal the battery voltage. So if we have, say, a 9-volt battery, 9 volts, then we know that the voltage between here and here is 9 volts. And we can simply add together the voltages of these two parts. Well, hey, we already know the diode's forward voltage, right? So we look, since we read that off the data sheet, let's say it's a, a blue LED. We're going to use 3 volts just to keep the numbers simple. Blue LEDs are usually closer to 2.6, 2.4, something in that range which means we need to know R. You know, we don't know the voltage through this resistor, we don't know anything else. Well, remember, we know that it has to add up. So we know that our voltage through the resistor is simply equal to the nine volts coming from the battery minus the three volts we lost in the diode. Straightforward enough, that gives us six volts. So this here, we know that voltage is six volts. That still doesn't tell us what the resistance is. So, there's this guy by the name of Ohm. He came up with a thing called Ohm's Law because he's kind of egocentric like that. Like most electrical engineers, ha! <laughs> no. Uh, so Ohm's law, basically what it says is that the voltage, yes we use E, <laughs> is equal to the current, we use I for that, <laughs> times the resistance, which is R. Okay, at least one of them makes sense. So, we know the voltage, that's 6 volts. We know the current, 20 milliampers. Uh, 20 milliampers happens to work out to 0.02 amperes, times our unknown resistance. Straightforward enough. So, moving this over here, what we get is 6 volts divided by 0 0.02 amperes is equal to our unknown resistance, which is equal to 300 ohms. Simple enough. So, if we put a 300 ohm resistor here, it'll work. Neat thing, if we need more LEDs, we can just simply connect them, what's called in parallel, and this will give us more LEDs. Now, as long as we use the same LED, we can use the same calculations and the same resistors and get another 300 ohms for this guy. Now, the thing is, this is, uh, well, this isn't the most efficient approach. I will cover a more efficient approach here in another video. This will get you started. If you need 100 LEDs, you can do this 100 times and your battery will work with it. Just be aware that your battery will last one one hundredth the time. So the more of these you have, the more problematic it is. If you want to know how to save some battery, make it perfect, or at least get much closer, tune in for the second video. Anyway, uh, this is John Michael. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a great evening.